All right, so it's 2016, and you've got an older 2012 MacBook Pro, and you want a new one so bad. You just don't know when the new one's coming out. So I'm going to show you how to upgrade this to be just as fast as the MacBook Pro Retina. And the best thing is you can do it for under $300. You don't need these exact SSDs, but they do need to be the same size. You're going to need 16 gigs of RAM and this drive caddy. You're also going to need an installation USB of El Capitan or Yosemite, so check out this video how to do that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is turn your computer off and flip it around to get to the screws. I listed in the description of the kind of screwdriver you're going to need because they're kind of special. It's a triple zero Phillips. I don't know why mine's a 666. Okay, so let's start in the back top right corner. These top screws are actually longer, so you need to keep them separate so that you don't get them mixed up. When you get to the one on the left back corner, you'll see it's a lot smaller. Super speed through these screws, but when you're done, make sure that you put them in the same order that you've taken them out. Okay, so slowly pry up the back, working the left and the right side, until you feel it release, and then you can pull the cover off. So the first thing we do when we're inside is disconnect the battery connector. Mine has been broken as you can see, but take a light guitar pick or, you know, a spudger or something and slowly pry up on it until it releases. Just take your time, you don't want to break anything. Alright, so we want to remove the stock hard drive and put in an SSD. So take your same triple zero Phillips screwdriver and remove the hard drive clamp. Once you've got that out, it's really easy to pop the hard drive out. All you gotta do is pull on this little plastic tab here. Next thing you're going to want to do is remove the SATA connector and the power from the back. So just slowly pull it out. And we're going to need these four screws off this hard drive and put them on the new SSD. They are a T6 torque screwdriver that will also be in the kit. And once you've got all four of those screws out, grab your new SSD and put those screws back in the same way you took them out of the mechanical hard drive. There you go. Alright, so now we need to connect it into the MacBook. So just like you took out the SATA connector, you plug it into this drive. Now when you're mounting the SSD, you're going to want to start in the back. There's two holes where these screws plug into and you'll feel it once it locks in and then drop it down. Now grab the bracket and your Phillips screwdriver and retighten the screws back down. And if you wanted to stop there, that's all you need to do to put one SSD in, but let's change the RAM now. So with two hands, release the latches on either side until the RAM pops up and just pull it straight back. Do the same with the second set. And once you pull that out, grab your new RAM, and you can see the way that it needs to go in with the longer side on the left. So start on the bottom and pop your RAM in on an angle, and then push it down until it locks. And do the exact same thing with the top row. And that is literally it. Super easy to upgrade the RAM. Alright, let's get real crazy and remove this optical drive and put in a second SSD. Alright, so we're going to need to remove these three connectors right here. The first connector is actually the SATA connector, and you're going to need to take your spudger or guitar pick and lightly pry up onto it till it pops. Now we're going to do the same thing with the second connector. Pop it up. And then we're going to need to remove this next connector by slowly pulling back on it. Be careful, this wire is very brittle. Now we're going to need to take that T6 Torx and take out this screw right here. Alright, now taking your Phillips screwdriver, you need to remove these two screws. Now gently pull this back. This is your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas. Now grab your T6 Torx screwdriver and remove these two back screws. Don't know why Apple was using two different kind of screws, but they did. Alright, the drive is actually loose now. Just lightly pull up on it, starting from the back and it should just pop right out with no effort at all. There you go. Okay, we're gonna need to remove a few things off this and put it on our new drive caddy. So we're gonna need to remove the SATA connector. So lightly pull that off, it should come out very easy. 
We need to put that to the side. And then we're going to need to remove this bracket. Okay, so we're going to need to put this bracket on our drive caddy. So grab the drive caddy. So we're going to take that SATA connector and plug that right in. Shouldn't be very hard. Now we're going to need to mount that bracket we took off the optical drive. For some reason my kit didn't come with screws, so I found some screws that I had laying around and they fit perfectly, but hopefully your kit comes with screws. And tighten them up, make sure they're tight. Alright, now we're going to need to get our second SSD and pop that into the drive caddy. Look at the connection points on your SSD and match them up with the drive caddy connection points. You can see the longer one is on the right. Put it on a slight angle and push it in until it pops. Make sure you push it all the way so that it's connected 100%. Then we're going to take the screws that came with the kit and mount our SSD to the caddy. Alright, once you've got those four screws mounted, you should have something that looks like this. And you're good to go to put it back in the MacBook Pro. Now flip it upside down. The drive is actually going to face the bottom. So move the Wi-Fi antenna out of the way and put it back in the same way you took the optical drive out. It should fit right in nicely. Okay, take your Phillips screwdriver and put those two Phillips screws that hold the antenna on. And then take your T6 Torx and screw it in to where the mount on the back is. Now we need to reconnect these three connectors. Make sure to push the small one in first until it snaps in. And the second connector will line up nicely and you'll feel it snap in when it's popped in. And now the SATA connector. You'll feel it pop down too. So that's basically it. Two SSDs and 16 gigs of RAM. Now we need to make sure we get this battery connector back in, so push it down till it locks. There you go. Alright, let's get this back case back on. So start at the front. You'll feel it lock down at the front and then pop it down and push all four corners. Now we need to put our screws in. Remember the three back ones are the longest. I usually do a cross pattern when I'm putting the back case on. And you can tighten down all the rest of the screws. Alright, this is where we're going to need that USB installer to put the OS on. You can refer to the link in the bottom. Plug it in, push the power and hold ALT and cross your fingers. Once this pops up, this is your installation on the USB. Click on that. It's going to take a little while, I've sped it up, but it'll take a couple minutes and then you're going to need to go to Disk Utility. So you can see our two drives we've installed here, we're going to need to erase them and make them as Mac OS Extended Journaled. And you can name them whatever you want. So do that to the first one, click Erase. And do the exact same thing to the second one. Click on it, click Erase, and give it a name. And once that's finished, we're going to make a RAID 0, so click the RAID tab, give your RAID a name, called mine SSD RAID. Now this is the important part, make sure for the RAID type you choose RAID Striped. Now you're going to drag your two drives into this box. This is where we're going to set up the RAID 0 and where the data is going to be striped across both drives to give you maximum speed. So click Create and it'll make the RAID for you. Now once it's finished, you'll see that we have one drive now that says 499 gigs. That's because the two 250 gig drives have now been combined into one. So close this out and go to Install OS X. Continue. Agree. Agree. And choose your SSD RAID you've created. It's going to give you a warning saying that some features aren't available. Just hit Continue. I didn't have my computer connected. Uh, I sped this up. This will take probably 15 minutes. So now it's finished. It's going to restart and take you to where you need to set up your Mac and to the desktop. 
Fill out all your information and you will be on the desktop in no time. I'm just going to show you the settings to show you. We've got our 16 gigs of RAM in here. And I'm going to show you that we have our storage here now. One drive, RAID 0. Here, both drives are showing. So the awesome thing about the 2012 MacBook Pro, and I think it's also on the 2011, don't quote me, but they both use a SATA 3 connection to the hard drive and to the optical drive. So now they're in RAID 0, you get full 6 gigabit per second. And here's our RAM with the two DIMMs, 8 gigs each. So let's go to some benchmarks. I'm running Geekbench here on all four systems, the first one being stock, second one with one SSD, the third one with full upgrades, and the fourth one being a MacBook Pro Retina of the same spec. Now the single core score is actually quite a bit lower on the two SSDs with the 16 gigs of RAM. I'm not quite sure why, but let's open Blackmagic Disk Test. So as you can see, our mechanical drive here is struggling, but with the one SSD, we're getting really good speeds. And with the two SSDs in RAID 0, we're killing it with speeds over 900 megabytes a second read and write. That's crazy. It even just dominates the MacBook Pro Retina with the same specs. Okay, so let's do a real world test here and take this 4K video file, it's like 3.5 gigs, and we're going to duplicate it. This is where you can really see where that speed comes in handy. So copy, and we're going to paste it to the desktop. Boom, it just flies through 3 gigs like nothing. And there you go, there's a great upgrade for a 2011 or 2012 MacBook Pro. If you need to watch the videos on how to make the installer and also how to enable trim on these SSDs, watch the videos below. Thanks for watching.